Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. This is Fair Value Finder and today we are taking a look at the Home Depot Incorporated, ticker HD. This is a stock that I've heard quite a bit about over the years, uh, definitely a dividend favorite. So let's dive into the numbers and see what a reasonable price to pay for the stock would be and uh, what kind of returns to expect from it. So I'm coming up with a fair value around 313 and a half. Uh, currently trading for 368 discounted cash flows coming in at 360 kind of in agreement with the current valuation of the stock so cash flows seem to be pretty strong here and that's why we're getting double digit cash flow yield uh, average is double digit slightly above average at the moment earnings yield is a bit low though uh, dividend yield around 2.4 to 2.5 seems like the typical payout ratio creeping up a little bit. They might want to slow down on growing it because it's getting a little bit above what we would deem safe. 30 to 50 percent of that payout ratio is ideal. This ROE looks insane because this debt equity looks insane because their assets are only slightly larger than their liabilities. Uh, those two are incredibly similar and it's really messing with the uh, balance sheet valuations and calculations but the roi and the roa both look amazing around 20 percent very good returns margins look good 30 and 10 is what we like to see and we're getting 33 and 10 essentially revenue is growing but very slowly i mean this is a massive chain so it is pretty difficult for them to grow an already massive number. But going forward, uh, analysts are projecting 1.11% this year and 1.83% next year for growth. So if they can keep up something in line with that, around 1.5% for the next three to five years, uh, then we can use that in our thesis here. Our share count, they're pretty good about buying back shares. In fact, this 2%. Might be a bit large. Uh, they bought back three. It's slowed down more recently to one and a half. And they're definitely at a higher valuation. So they might only be buying back 1%. Cash flows. I'm just trying to bring it a little bit more in line with uh, what they've seen historically. Be reasonable with it. So a very small 0.3% shrinkage would take them to 10.8% cash flow yield in five years which is completely reasonable from what we're seeing here. In fact, it might be even higher. Assets, they grow at two, one and a half to two and a half percent. So uh, two is completely reasonable for asset growth going forward. Liabilities slow down quite a bit, uh, three and a half and then 0.5. Uh, so, uh, 1.5 reasonable there, maybe even a 1. I think a 1. They have slowed it down quite a bit. Dividend growth, 9%. They grow that dividend a lot. So it looks like that's something that they find important, and I'd expect that they continue to grow as much as they can. So we'll go with maybe 8% there. I'd bring them to a 4.6% yield on cost. If you buy today, if they continue growing it at 8%, uh, you'd be getting paid $13.22 per year. And based on your cost of your shares, uh, you'd be looking at a really good dividend yield because they're really good at growing it. And then margins, some slow growth. Uh, it'd bring them back more in line with what we've seen traditionally. So. I think 290 is a good price for this. After we adjusted some numbers, it looks like you might want a little bit more of a discount from there. 280 would get you out performance in the three year in line with the five year. I mean, with the small revenue growth, you can't expect massive gains here. This is something to keep an eye on and uh, try and buy up when it's undervalued in the low 200s, which it hasn't been. The lowest it's been in the last 52 weeks is 274. So if a dividend is important to you, this looks like a very good, healthy dividend growth stock and uh, might be just trying to 
find a target yield, maybe two and a half percent. If you can buy it up anytime that it reaches that, uh, you'll be sitting pretty good in a few years. In fact, very good. Yeah, so 280 would be the lowest that I'd really want to buy this thing at. And it's been that low in the past 52 weeks. If you can buy it at the 52 week low, you're looking at 4% outperformance in three years, 3% in five years. So again, the growth isn't really there. It's not outperforming the market in growth. So you are losing a little bit in the uh, the five year. So we're seeing some good outperformance in the three year, but it's slowing down, getting a bit closer in the five year. I mean, there's only really one big red flag here, and that's the balance sheet. That debt to equity is insane. And we'd have to dive into it and see what is on that balance sheet. Like, how are they doing inventories? And do they have leases? Oh. Are they paying off all their buildings? Those are all some pretty important things that could affect that balance sheet going forward. Not that it looks like it's too important to the market, but at least for the valuation of the company, it would have a bit of an effect. Looking for a best case scenario here, let's say it outperforms analyst estimates, 2% uh, for the next five years. Share count, if they can continue buying back 1.4%, although I really don't think that they will be able to. Uh, cash flow, let's just say that they're able to hold at the 11.75. Uh, so we'd be looking at 2% growth there as well. Assets, so 2.4, that's the higher range of what we've seen. Liabilities, 0.5. This is going to be a best case scenario here. I'm going to hold the dividend where it's at in the margin. I'm going to give it a little bit more so we see some outperformance. In five years from the average and in that case 260 to 275 would be the the range to get into it i mean these numbers here aren't counting the dividend that you're getting paid but you'd have returns in the valuation of your shares in line with markets if you're buying around 268 uh, for the three year and then 258 for the five year. So even in the best case scenario, I still feel the mid 300s is a little much for this company. Low 300s, ideally high 200s would be the place to get in. And I can place it on the watch list. It does have, with dividends factored in, 8.6% returns, at least in this best case scenario. It was uh, mid sevens in the worst case scenario. So I will put it on the watch list so we can keep an eye on it and see if it pops back up and how the thesis plays out over time. So I want to thank you guys for watching. Please like and enjoy the video. Comment what other stocks we should take a look at and subscribe so you can stay up to date with everything. And I'll catch you next time.